रोशनी का कारवां दिस पॉडकास्ट इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय स्कोर फाउंडेशन Hi, my name is George Abraham, and welcome to Iway Conversations. My guest today is Vishal Kumar Jain from Bangalore. He is an HR consultant, a mountaineer, and a musician. Hi, Vishal. Welcome. Thank you, George. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. So, Vishal, I believe you've been working with uh, Shell now for about four years. What's your journey been like? It's interesting. Uh, Shell is one of the most inclusive company I've worked so far. I worked with Tata Motors earlier, and uh, even that was a very inclusive organization. And I am involved in multiple projects as a global HR consultant. Uh, you've now been working with two top companies, Tata Motors as well as Shell. Uh, what have been your professional roles? Meaning, how did you? What did you start with, and how did you evolve? What has been your journey? I started as a manager in Tata Motors uh, through my campus placements in I am Lucknow. I was uh, project managing in the space of learning, talent acquisition, employee engagement, talent management. Then I moved on to uh, being a project lead where I was deploying HR analytics. It was a completely new area for the organization, and right from setting up. Uh, the roadmap to setting up systems, working with uh, technology and HR across. It was an interesting space uh, with the technology evolving, right? Then Shell brought me back home to Bangalore, and uh, I started with uh, uh, being an HR consultant uh, for one of the largest units uh, in India. And uh, as a HR consultant, you get projects from. any aspect of hr right so that's uh, the nature of the work and more recently i moved to a larger role which is a global hr consulting space and uh, i get assigned uh, projects which are uh, pertaining to research technology and multiple other spaces where there is good global presence uh, vishal uh, you lost your eyesight or your eye problem began when you were in school and i also know that you had a break in your education so tell me uh, our listeners would uh, love to know uh, how did you and your family respond to the uh, loss of sight when you were in school and uh, and you actually turned things around so what's the story there i was uh, diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa and uh, i could see more than 90% at one point gradually it started deteriorating that was the situation even with my brother and sister so three out of four siblings have this condition right and after a point we didn't know what to do uh, when we couldn't read books anymore and uh, we dropped out of school i did discontinued for 3 years my brother for 7 years sister for 12 years right but one thing my parents did they never lowered expectations from us we were expected to do any other child whatever the any other child was expected to do wherever things you had to figure out other ways of dealing with it they used to help me help us think and so on but the expectations were there and that's very critical for anybody to grow and chance brought us to bangalore i moved to bangalore in search of opportunities i got us uh, connected with a few volunteers ngos and uh, got to know how you become independent and get back to school and just worked out one by one everybody got in back to school if you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness please share the iwe national toll free helpline number 18005320469 the number is 18000 532046 Today there are a number of blind and visually impaired people who have uh, gone into the Indian Institute of Managements across the country to do their MBAs and so on but you are among the early 
blind persons who actually made it to an IIM? Well, till become second year, I yeah. had not heard of IIM. We were discussing amongst friends what to do next, and that's when I started thinking. And I thought, okay, uh, something MBA is something I relate to. I took a old CAT paper. CAT is a common entrance test exam, which you need to clear to get into uh, any of the best IIMs or best B schools in India. Right. Can you imagine how much I scored in that mock exam? Tell me. Minus 10. <laughs> <laughs> Minus 10, okay. Yeah, and that's what made me realize where I stand. Then I decided, anyways, I have decided to do MBA and from one of the best B schools in India. Right. So might as well start with where I am, where I am today. Right. So I started with third standard math book. And that's what is critical. Be it admission into a B school or any good college, be it a job or promotion or growth. Yeah. Being self-aware is very self-aware is very critical. Yeah. Once you're self-aware, work towards bridging the gap. And that's what I did. And that took me to I am Lucknow. Once you get into it, it's a very uh, rigorous course. Uh, not everything was accessible when I started, um, but professors were open to listen and they made things inclusive over a period of time. Uh, got me books, uh, readers over a period of time, and uh, I could cope with it. Initially, it was extremely challenging uh, because the pace of the course is uh, very, very quick, very, very fast. And don't get the accessible material right on the first day like others get. Right. So that was uh, definitely a challenging aspect of it. But you are with some of the best minds in the country and even from other abroad in that space. So you learned a lot from your peers as well. Yeah. Uh, so that that something opened up my mind with a lot of things, be it not just academics, but culturally uh, and thinking beyond uh, education and employment. What was the process uh, for you to get your placements done? Uh, you being a person with disability, was there anything special that was arranged for you? Largely, the campus process was similar to uh, whatever was there for everybody else. Yeah. Two things I did. Yeah. One is a lot of uh, people who come to interview, they may not be sensitized on disability inclusion and how we work. Yeah. So what I did was since we don't interact with uh, them directly and it's the placement team who does it, yeah. I sensitize the placement team how I work yeah. so that they can be my voice. Yeah. The other thing I used to do was, along with my CV, I used to ha add a FAQ page, which yeah. talks about my visual impairment, how I work, how I, I work with assistive aids. And because of my visual impairment, what are some of the things I've developed over a period of time? Yeah, so that would break the ice and during the conversation, they also get a little comfortable to express. And that's how it started. Vishal, uh, you were also kind of telling me your interest in uh, adventure, mountaineering, skydiving, and so on. When I was joined uh, Tata Motors, as part of onboarding program, we were sent for a leadership and team building uh, training. Yeah. It was in Uttarkashi Tata Steel Adventure Foundation had organized it. It's headed by Bachindri Pal. Yeah. First few days, I used to fall 20, 25 times a day. Right. Because I can't see whether the next step has a rolling stone, slippery mud, what height or angle the next step is going to be. So I, just like a child learns to walk, yeah. I learned to climb. First, you learn to build center of, uh, maintain center of gravity, irrespective of the terrain and step that you take. Yeah. And slowly it becomes part of you and you start enjoying the nature. Right. I enjoyed it so much that I went back and uh, did a mountaineering course, uh, full-fledged 30 days mountaineering course from Nehru Institute of Mountaineering. Yeah. It's one of the most grueling places I've ever uh, experienced because right. most of the trainers and even students are from Indian Army. So the standards are completely different, very high. Right. So in this course, uh, I learned how to climb up and down on rock, uh, mountain, 
ice, snow. And, uh, maybe I'll share a couple of experience how it feels. Right. My guide and I trained ourselves on how we will communicate and uh, uh, manage while climbing. But we encounter things which we had not imagined and thought of. Yeah. Example, uh, I was, we reached a point when we were climbing and uh, there was a stream, 20 yeah. feet wide stream. Imagine um, 60 degree angle, the water is flowing at extreme high speed. Yeah. You can't even hear what uh, each of what we talk. Even if you shout, you can't hear. Yeah. So verbal communication has gone for us. Yeah. And we need to cross that stream. Yeah. The bridge that was made out of was just one single tree trunk. Yeah. We had to walk on that and cross. Yeah. Our guide said, we shall, we'll cross this. But if you lose your balance or if you start to lose your balance, leave my hand. Mm. Started wondering why is he saying that he is supposed to take care of me <laughs> and save me. <laughs> then he explained, see, if you fall and not uh, hold me, continue to hold me, I'll also fall with you and there's nobody to save us. Right. So if you fall and I, uh, you leave me, I'll come back and save you. Mm. And that's when I understood what he meant. Uh, we started moving inch by inch. And once we reached the middle of the stream, it started swinging. <laughs> Obviously, it's a tree <laughs> trunk, right? A round in shape, hardly one feet wide, one, one and a half feet wide. Right. Oh, that was scary. Mm. It somehow crossed. After we crossed, we remembered God. 15 minutes, we didn't utter a word. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, did you, and did you have to come back the same way? That day, the same day I crossed another 10 streams. Mm. The, it's about that first experience, right? Anything we experience for the first time, it always feels extremely difficult. Uh, but you train and you learn how to deal with it. Right. So there were many such occasions. Similarly, we climbed up uh, at 12,000 feet. Uh, I was coming back from a glacier walk, um, extreme um, weather. Oxygen level is 50%, which means even if you walk for 10 steps, you go breathless. Yeah. We had to cross a landslide prone area. And right. the weather condition changed and there was high risk of landslide occurring while we were going back. Right. So the instruction given to us was we had to run. Right. And imagine you are running not just on a flat surface. It's <laughs> up and down mountain. Yeah. And with that oxygen level, <laughs> within five minutes, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. So I, I told my guide, sir, can we allow me to take five breaths? You know what he said? And that's something I cannot forget throughout yeah. my life. He said, if you are alive, you can do that after we reach the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I didn't utter a word after that, and it's possible. So it's about facing that fear, moving through, and that's when I realized we don't even, I don't even utilize 10% of my capacity. Mm. A mountain helps us uh, really discover that. Pachinripal, what she says is when the body gives up, mind takes over, and mind really takes over if you allow it to take over. Right. I enjoyed that so much that I went to uh, Nepal and uh, climbed Mount Everest Base Camp at 18,200 feet above sea level. Mm. And the experience was extremely memorable. The kind of uh, terrain, uh, I've never experienced something like that. Uh, took us 10 days to climb. Every day we used to climb for 10, 12 hours a day. Um, and all these mountain, you need to carry your gears 15, 20 kgs on. Yeah. Yeah, something memorable. You also did some skydiving. So tell oh, me yeah. a little bit about that. That was an interesting tour. So when I visited Netherlands for work, I added some personal travel and went to uh, Vienna, Austria. Right. I approached one of the companies who uh, organized skydiving and they were open to uh, explore. I, The way it works is uh, the guide, it's a tandem jump. Yeah. You jump with another person tied to each other. Yeah. He gives the instruction and man manages the parachute. Yeah. So you put your safety gears on, uh, climb onto an aircraft. Yeah. And 
we reached 13000 feet uh, above sea level and yeah. the door of the aircraft opens right you slide towards the door yeah. stick your legs out and that's when you realize where you are <laughs> <laughs> Because the noise and the speed of the wind hits you. Right. And before it hits you and you realize you are out of the plane, you jump. And I had asked my uh, guide, uh, since I don't see, I had asked him to give me, ensure I have a full feel of it and experience it. And he got very excited. And once we jumped, he did a somersault. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was rolling midair. Yeah. Mm. And at a speed, I mean, I was falling at uh, when the free fall, yeah. the, it's at 220 kilometers per hour. Wow, wow. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. I opened my mouth to breathe. I couldn't breathe with that speed of wind coming in and I couldn't even close my mouth. <laughs> right. And once the parachute opens, it feels really good. Uh, mm. You're flying literally. Right. And that's the point you can also speak. I could, uh, he could describe how the VNR looked uh, down below and it's beautiful. To support our work with the blind and visually impaired, you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in. Please note, www.scorefoundation.org.in uh, You mentioned uh, at a certain point when you lost your vision, uh, your two of your siblings also lost their vision. Would you like to tell me a little bit about uh, the journeys of your two siblings? What are they doing today and how did they deal with their situation? Absolutely. <laughs> My elder brother, Amit, he dropped out of school when he was in seventh, yeah. Hindi medium. Yeah. He had a gap uh, and then he directly did his 10th, then 12th directly. And he did his BCom from IGNO. Yeah. And he has an excellent uh, growth, uh, share through extreme focus and hard work. He's a very focused guy. Anything he picks up... Uh, He's a musician, uh, performed uh, in many, uh, more than uh, three countries. And he currently works with uh, SBI uh, as a deputy manager. My sister, Rekha, also started with Hindi medium, dropped out after seven, 12 years. She was among the topper in school, but since we didn't know how to deal with the situation, dropped out of school, 12 years she couldn't study and then directly 10th and continued her studies and beyond a point she felt she wanted to focus on doing things or learning things that she loved rather than a formal education. So she took up courses informally where whatever she felt like learning, right from gardening to uh, reading spiritual uh, material. And now she in fact teaches uh, Jainism to students online uh, she has students from uh, across India, US, uh, Australia, and so on. All of us are doing what we enjoy, and thanks to all the support system we got, right? So unless we have got the support system from family, from volunteers, uh, at that crucial point, uh, we couldn't have thought of doing all this. I'm really grateful for that. You mentioned that your brother is into music, and you also have some interest in music. Uh, what's the kind of music you play and uh, uh, meaning how do you spend your time with music? I'm a percussionist. I play around six musical instruments, uh, tabla, dholak, congo, octopad, bongo, right. drums. Yeah. I kept switching from one instrument to the other and uh, now I'm focusing on uh, octopad and tabla. Amit is more focused with keyboard. Do you Do you jam? Oh yeah, we do. Uh, we had a band we performed uh, in India, US earlier when we were in college. Now uh, it's more of freelancing whenever uh, we have time and when uh, we get shows, we perform. What's the kind of music you play? Um, Semi-classical, light music, Bollywood, mostly for hours around this. Is there anything else that you do... Uh... 
to actually self-discover yourself or reinvent yourself or to find peace for yourself. Oh, yeah. I am into Vipassana meditation. Uh, that really helps me uh, observe myself, understand myself and stay neutral to all that uh, we encounter. Right? So, And I used to meditate for quite a few years, but when I went for Vipassana meditation is when I realized what meditation is. Right. Uh, it's, it's a journey, it's a discovery of our own uh, self, right? So unless we are with ourselves, with all the distraction of, uh, we really can't uh, understand who we are. Uh, so this, for example, I went for this Vipassana first time, 10 days course. Uh, you're cut off from the world, no phone, no entertainment, no music. Uh, it's only you and yourself, and you don't even talk to people around. It's completely uh, what we call as maun. Yeah, we don't speak even right. normal, non-verbally. Right. That's very helpful to get into yourself and understand yourself. Uh, when we get away from distraction, is when we uh, our mind gets clearer, and it helps in improving our focus levels, productivity. And uh, for Vipassana, it's not about that. It's not even about health. It's about, uh, it's a spiritual path, uh, not pertaining to any religion as such, but it's it's a path uh, for self-discovery. And for me, it has helped a lot. Uh, if one thing that I would recommend anyone to uh, do, it would be Vipassana because it really helps you discover yourself. One last question, you know, you've uh, lived in Mumbai, you've lived in uh, Bangalore, you've lived in uh, Noida, you've traveled across the world, um, and, and you've been blind. Uh, how do you include yourself in the, in the environment, both in terms of people and nature, as you go along? It's an interesting one. Including ourselves requires us to express who we are and be ourselves. Because you are expert of who you are. Uh, we can't expect others to understand us all the time. So if we encounter any accessibility challenge, be it in public space or at work, it's about expressing and letting others know that this is how you, how you work. You are different from others. It's not a disability. It, it's, you are, it's just that you are different. And you have a different way of working. They need to understand that. And when we highlight that, this is how you need, and these are the, your requirements. Also help them understand how it can be addressed because they are not experts a lot of times. For example, we discovered an app that is not accessible. Instead of top talking amongst ourselves, it's simpler to write to the customer care team that this particular screen is not accessible. I can't click on this button using my screen reader or write on App Store or Play Store of that app, uh, it gets more attention. So it's all about highlighting with some aspect of solutioning. Yes, a lot of people are not aware, but they are willing to include. And when they are, there are aspects where people are not very open to include, and that's the time we need to collaborate with more people. Uh, and when more voices reach them, they are more open to uh, look into it. Yeah, it's. It, it should not appear as only one person is looking for a uh, solution because when I, I worked with a lot of uh, organizations, startups to make their products accessible, uh, to make their solutions accessible. And one thing that I hear commonly is okay, not many, not nobody reached out to, uh, with this issue for me. So I'm not sure where, whether it's really an issue. And that gets difficult when people approach for solutioning of accessibility challenges, for example. So it's always good to highlight and don't wait for others to do it. Uh, more voices are always stronger. Great. Um, so Vishal, thank you very much for spending the time today and uh, talking to me and talking to uh, IB Conversations. Uh, wish you the very best as you move on in life. Pleasure talking to you, George. Thanks a lot for having me. This podcast was brought to you by Score Foundation. Yeah,
是你打开。